Hello everyone. Let us learn about VLSI design cycle or VLSI design flow. Uh, before going to VLSI design flow, we must know why do we require this design flow? Because in the earlier days, this won't be there. This was not there. Why? Because the, as the electronic circuits were too small, so we don't require a particular flow. They used to design the VLSI circuits uh, with physically, they don't require a particular flow. They don't. They don't. They don't require. Uh, they did not require this uh, CAD tools and all these things. But as the circuit complexity increased, we have to. We need to follow a stepwise procedure. So let us quickly go to that procedure. So, the first step. In the VLSI design life cycle or VLSI design flow is specification. As you might have known this, we use chips for various purposes. Like we use chips for automobile purposes. We use chips for mobile phones, computers. We use chips for medical applications. Uh, so many things were there. Thus, in the specification process, uh, these things are decided. Like the designers uh, will have a clear idea on why what this chip is going to used for. And also, we define some important parameters of the system in this particular phase. And next comes is high-level design. In high-level design, uh, the design architecture is defined. Like it's like uh, the interfaces is also defined. Interface between the blocks is defined in this high-level design. Uh, the chip is divided into so many blocks. So the the upper-level design is known as high-level design. And then comes is low level design. So, low level design is also known as micro architecture phase. In this, you are more, you are zooming it into the chip. This is similar kind of high level design, but uh, the, uh, in the blocks, we, we are going to design what are, we are going to tell what components must be present in this phase. And then comes is RTL coding. Uh, before going to RTL coding, we must know what, what this RTL is. RTL stands for Resistor Transfer Level. That means in this phase, you'll, you'll define the behavior of the circuit from uh, how the data is transferred, transmitted between the resistor to resistor. This can be done using uh, many languages like Verilog, VHDL, or uh, such kind of things and then comes is functional verification so why do we require functional verification because there might be some bugs in rtl coding why because you your design your intention is uh, something and you are getting the output something else so to ensure that uh, no nothing unintended happens so uh, it must be your desirable right the chip must be so you we use we go for functional verification ah yes then we go to logic synthesis logic synthesis in the sense in the rtl coding rtl level we don't have uh, we don't understand we don't have these gates and all those things it, it is in some behavioral format so to convert that behavioral format to the gate level format, we use logic synthesis. Synthesis is like a form of, we can see the gates and all those things after synthesis, but before synthesis, we can't see those things. And then uh, to be more clear about functional verification, what we do in functional verification is we'll have a behavioral circuit there will apply some input stimuli and will observe the output response. Uh, from By this procedure, we'll verify the circuit. And in logic synthesis, we have various tools, like we have a design compiler tool from which we convert the behavioral syntax into gate level syntax. And then the next phase comes is the gate before going to the gate level simulation we'll have some other steps we'll have we have dft dft stands for design for test 
here in DFT, what we do is uh, now all we have is gate level circuit. For that gate level circuit, we have to apply patterns and we have to check if the circuit is working correct or not. So what happens in DFT is we make the circuit testable because the circuit which is designed by the RTL engineers, it, it will be not used for testing. To make it testable, we go for this DFT step. There are many uh, subtopics present in this design flow. Uh, I'm going it in brief. Like I'm not going in detail. I'm just uh, briefing you what is the de design life cycle. And in DFT, there are there are many things happens. Then we go for placement and routing. Like the DFT and placement routing, like all the steps here from here, they will be interactive. Like after logic synthesis, the design will be the gate level netlist will be taken netlist. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say this thing netlist. They they take the netlist and they work parallelly. They work. There will be a great interaction between from one team to other team. And then what this placement and routing, what happens in this placement and routing phase is you'll have the netlist gate level netlist from the synthesis tool. There you'll you'll check, you'll check the place, uh, place. You will you the main intention of this team is they must reduce the place in the chip. And what is routing is routing makes sure that there are less number of fights with less number of length with. Uh, minimum length. The placement and routing is done by the physical design team. And in they, they have different tools for placement and routing. Every design, every phase in this design flow will have their particular tools. So then after placement and routing, there are still many steps. And after this placement and routing, we'll look for, we'll sign off like so everything is done after placement and routing. Then we'll send this to fabrication. Art fabrication, they they follow their technology and they convert the gate level netlist or, or whatever you have, the GDS2 file. They will convert it into the real silicon. After this real silicon, we, we I told you right in the DFT phase, we have we'll generate some patterns and we'll apply it to the circuit in dft what happens is entirely software thing but those patterns you must need to apply in some real world right so that thing happens in post silicon validation so this is the brief like the explanation what i what i wanted to give you so thanks for listening